Okay, so welcome to a video. This one's going to be talking about an upcoming Kickstarter that I'm hoping to launch in a few days time. And uh, this hopefully will give you a little bit more information about the Kickstarter as it's coming and maybe just get you interested before we actually release it. So as you know, uh, Advanced Fighting Fantasy stems from the Fighting Fantasy game books. These were released in the 1980s. Uh, they sold vast numbers of copies, millions and millions and millions of copies, and they were the preeminent solo game book and obviously advanced fight fantasy came from that so it has its origins as a solo game and so some years ago arian games decided we're going to write a solo guide for the advanced fight fantasy role-playing game and so th this progressed fairly slowly to begin with um, and then it was taken over in part by uh, Daniel Quinlan as, as author to really bring this project on. And it's come on in huge leaps and bounds since that happened. So, Daniel, I've introduced this new book as the Advanced Fighting Fantasy Solo Guide, which is what everyone seems to have known it as since it's, it was first mentioned. Does yep. it focus only on running Advanced Fighting Fantasy without a director? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um... When we were talking about this uh, a few years ago and trying to work out what we were going to do with it, um, I think it started off a lot as a conversation about running adventures within cities and um, the sort of difficulties of doing that, particularly not just for solo players, um, but also for directors. Yeah. And um, the problems with coming up with a city or an environment that you can play through in a fun and interesting way, uh, but it doesn't require hours and hours and hours and hours of preparation yep. and extra work put in to get to that point. So sort of discussing, okay, if this is what we want to do, if we want to help solo players, but it will also help people who are <clears throat> people who are um, acting as the director yep. for a group of players or any sort of combination of those uh, and then we just sort of started, started trying to uh, work out ideas and work out how we might how we might do that so uh, essentially we're going to title this i think the adventure creation system and yep. so obviously it, it it creates the adventure and what you do with it then whether it's solo whether it's as a director or whether you're actually writing yourself a setting or whatever is entirely up to you. But the yep. book is going to create, allow you to create adventures. Essentially, create uh, the setting for a game book, which you can then use in whatever way you want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about um, taking a lot of the work off the hands of people. Yeah. Um, which and is good. And giving loads of ideas. <laughs> Because time, time is short these days, and absolutely all the ex, all the more tools you have to help create uh, the, the, an, an evocative setting, I think, is useful. So, what's what's actually in the new book? Uh, well, there's a lot of things. A lot of <laughs> it things. Ends up being, it's, it ends up being quite a big, uh, quite a big beast. Yes, uh, I think bigger than we originally planned. I think original. Well, at some point we were talking about actually having three books. Yes, uh, one of them being focused on cities, one of them being focused on the wilderness, and one of them being focused on dungeons. Yeah. And then at some point in those discussions, we're sort of saying, well, it's going to be a lot of, we're going to try and be consistent across those things, yeah. and there'll be similar ideas. So let's put them all into one book. So that, I suppose, is the basis of it, or the, the core part would be, how do you make a city that you can play a game in, a wilderness and a dungeon you can yeah. play a game in? And how do we give people the the tools and the ideas to do that with the you know in the easiest but most sort of interesting way? Yeah. So it's trying to balance those two things. Are going well. It's got to be something which really helps you to do this quickly and easily, but it's also still got to be have the variety to be interesting. Yeah. Um, so plenty of tables that. and tools and tips and guidelines and yep. mini yep. systems and that sort of thing. I, I think some people, as as we've found from the, the Maelstrom Doomsday book, people like little subsystems within games, little ones that you can almost do as a game in and of itself. 
you know creative yeah. game or in and of itself yeah um it's like having a menu in a restaurant isn't it yeah you don't you don't have to eat the entire menu you pick the bits you like you, you like and you want to uh, you want to get involved with so and put, and put them um, together into a good meal yeah yeah i mean i don't i don't expect anyone to use everything in it entirely as it's written i think most people who play uh, role playing games like to invent yeah. they like to create their own stuff um but it's it's much easier to do that when you've got a sort of basis to work from isn't it yeah so this so, sort of gives you the skeleton to hang the the the, the, the setting on yeah, yeah yeah well yeah i mean the skeleton plus uh a lot of other fleshy bits, which are <laughs> fleshy bits. <laughs> sort of optional, which you can you can put in there as you like. I mean, because yeah. I say it has ended up being a, a really quite big bit yeah. of work. Um, so well, I we think... try to include as many helpful and useful options as possible. Well, I think toolkits, so, tool, I... yeah, toolkits like that are useful because you can use the bits you want. Yeah, and obviously, you know, if you've got lots of detail. And you keep using it sooner or later you end up you repeating the same detail but then because yes. you've been using it a lot it's easy enough to to take the core of what you said so if you come across a particular wizard and they've got a particular personality and they say a particular thing well if you've already used that before and you want to change it we'll just change it you've still got a wizard but you can just tweak it so slightly so you can use it verbatim you can use it uh, you know as a as a guideline and so obviously you've mentioned wilderness and dungeons and cities so all three yep. so is it flexible enough so if you look at back to the old game books you had some set in a desert temple you had some adventures set on lizard island you had some set in black sand or some set in you know different cities and different settings so is it flexible enough that it can sort of adapt to different oh yeah yeah for sure um so what we've started with is sort of um you know the generic settings but then we've included in their ideas and rules for adapting it to make it more specific yeah. um so it, it's it, it's entirely a system where you can use the same set of ideas and rules to make much more specific things which suit whatever your campaign and setting is um so if you've got a particular idea like you want to play your entire campaign in a desert yeah you can absolutely do that um or wherever it is you want to be um but you can use the ideas uh so for example let's say you wanted to be in uh a a city in the desert yeah well if you look in the guide to creating settlements to creating cities you've got a different You've got a whole set of different locations you can put within your city and you can just adapt and say, I'll just take these ones yep. to put in my city. And then with the encounters, the locations have encounter tables. Yeah. But obviously you can change whatever those encounters, the particular encounters are to make it more suitable for your setting. Yeah. But it still uses the same system of the idea of, OK, I'm going to go into a city there's going to be things here and things there and they've got different characteristics or I'm going to go into the wilderness and it's got weather, it's got rules for hunting and foraging um, and it's got encounters which aren't just monster encounters. There's things in the wildernesses, of in the wilderness that yeah. are, are not just monsters, you know. Yeah, so, so, you know, there's like... so, so you know, in a, in, a, in a more sort of vanilla fantasy you might have you know the isolated cottage in the woodland uh but yeah. of course in a desert it might be a hut at an oasis um yeah. you know it might even be a um a, you know in a snowy one it it might be um a, again like an isolated sort of mountain hut or yeah and, and i think by doing that you're taking again the same basic concepts but you're just reskinning them to suit the different environments you have yeah, um, yeah. And, and I think that, that, that adds the flexibility. So obviously, because there's lots and lots of options, what books, what advanced fine fantasy books do you need to run this? Do you need all um, of the books? No. Um, obviously, you need the core rule book. Yeah. Um, so you need to understand the basis of the game and how the game works. Um, and preferably at least one of the uh, best stories, beast stories. Yeah, best stories, yeah. 
most recent, never quite sure how to say that word. Um, uh, because that gives you a wide range of options yeah. in terms of, you know, monsters to choose from. We've included a lot of monsters and things and rules for creating new monsters yeah. in this book. But obviously, if you have more of the best trees, you've got more choices. Yeah. Um, and then there's things like the combat companion, the hero's companion, which you don't need, but they add to it. So what you need is the core rule book and probably one of the best trees. Yeah. That's that's sort of like the minimum. And then obviously, the more more books you add on to that, the better it is, I suppose, as an yeah. overall experience. Yeah, and, you know, you could add in the Encyclopedia Arcana Treasures book, you could add in the Tiger yep. Herbal, you could add in, um, you could even add in Demons of Doom, you could add in just all, all of them to to expand that. But it's, it's you know, I think it is good that you just need the core one and you can build from it as well. So that's, that's really useful. So, um, so the layout is going ahead. Um, mm -hmm. We are gonna launch the Kickstarter on the last day of April. Yeah. So I think what we'll do, we, we I may even uh, interview you again once we've launched it. We might talk about maybe a specific, maybe talk about a specific settlement created or a bit of an example or something like that. Um, yeah. The layout is being done and the art will be done. And so um, hopefully in about a week's time that will go live. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, if, if, you who are watching this, you like this book, back it. Um, I, th I, I personally, and I think I can say this without, you know, fear of being biased. I didn't write this book, but I think this could be a game changer in the way people approach advanced fighting fantasy, because the rule book gives you really good, but rather straightforward rules, adaptable rules that you can use to run role playing games. Obviously, there's lots of expansions out there that give you options. We've got tons of monsters treasures and so on you know going back to the game books and what this does is it almost fills in that third major piece of the puzzle because it gives you a way to create the adventures you need and i think many role-playing yeah. games lack this they give you the tools to run the game but they don't often give you the tools to create the adventures and yeah I, I, I just just on that point um as well as the the sections on dungeons, wildernesses, and cities. Yep. There, there is very long and uh, fairly detailed sections covering uh, creating villains. Yep. Which is called them villains. Yep. Um, and creating quests, adventures. Yep. So that's that's not left out. Of this book It's very much included. And, and actually, the part about creating quests and writing quests was some that that was some of the parts of the book that took the longest to write yeah because um <clears throat> it it becomes very difficult to sort of like reduce that down to uh, a series of components and, and explain them carefully yeah but th there is you know villains and missions form a major part of this book i suppose it's harder to get it to make sense because you've got you know if you've got um a mission where the first part says rescue a princess and the next bit says it's set underwater on a on a wrecked galleon it's a bit hard to work out why a princess is ended up on a wrecked galleon i mean maybe she's i don't know but yeah i i, I see it's, it. you, you know it's it's harder to string these together to make a coherent story but um but that, that's i mean that's the fun of it but it's yeah. like it's going okay well I, we can't tell you absolutely this is what you should do in every circumstance no. Because that, I mean, that would be ridiculously restrictive, and I don't think people would like it anyway. No. But we can say, okay, well, you know, a mission or an adventure can consist of these sorts of things that you might do, and yeah. for these reasons. And then in there, we sort of explained, okay, well, this is how you bring it all together to make it into a coherent yeah. idea, and given a whole load of examples of that as well. Yeah. Um, so again, it's all about. Um, looking at AFF and saying, how, how do we make it uh, easier for people to play play games? How do we make it easier for people to write adventures yeah. and create campaigns and settings and create places where they can run the games? Because a lot of the time, what you find is, you know, people want to do it, or they're like, well, I want to do it, but. I don't have the time to do this. Yeah, and you or, know, I mean, you know, we, I'm not sure where to start with it. 
the thing is, you know, we've published adventures with published setting guides, and they're, they're great. Mm. But obviously, firstly, it takes quite a lot of time to write a book like Black Sand or Travels in Arian, um, yeah. or an event, or, or, a, or a campaign like the Atlantis campaign. And uh, even then, it takes us a long time to write and publish it. But then it's not necessarily exactly what the director is looking for. No, um, exactly. You know, and so you you know, Black Sand, fantastic, evocative city, but it doesn't quite. Some people might not want pirates, and Black Sand is heavily influenced by pirates. And if you don't want them, that's not the city for you. And we can't, yeah. you know, we 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 don't have the resources to produce forty different city guides. So what yeah. makes a lot more sense is to say, well, look, we can produce some very detailed settings. But this gives you the tools to create those settings yourself and build them up. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. So I, th I think it'll be a it'll be a huge book, and um, you know, please back the Kickstarter because I, I think it will uh, absolutely change the way you play Advanced Fighting Fantasy. So thank you very much, Daniel. And thank you. Uh, uh, please do back the Kickstarter as soon as the Kickstarter appears. I'll put a link in this video uh, text, and I will obviously embed this in the Kickstarter page as well. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you very yep. much. Thank you.